Albert Breer, the Monday morning quarterback, senior NFL reporter, joining us on the program. The Cowboys make the right decision yesterday. Uh, I mean, I think I think they probably did, and I know it's not going to satisfy very many people, but you know, I think there are two things to look at if, for, for with Jerry Jones here. Like, first, this is to his history. I mean, it's just. The idea that he's like this wildcat owner is just wrong. Um, you know, he kept Jason Garrett for nine and a half years. He got into a fourth year with Wade Phillips. Um, you know, he really has never had a quick trigger, and he has been loyal to his coaches and he's empowered his coaches. And so, you know, I think that that's that that that's one piece of it. And then the second piece of it to me is uh, maybe a little fear. Um, you know, they won twelve games three years in a row. It's been a long time since the Cowboys were that good over an extended period of time. And I know the playoff um, results haven't been satisfying, but I think, you know, it's maybe a little fear that if we pull the plug on on what we've got now um, and try to hit reset, and even with the same group of players, it might be hard to to, to get up to this level again. And look, like, there's going to be fallout too. Like, now, I mean, I would say Dan Quinn probably leaves, right? Like, especially with the opportunity in Seattle out there. Mm-hmm. You know, if they offer him the job, I think he'd have a hard time passing it down. Um, and then, you know, this could be Belichick going to Atlanta. So there's certainly some te- tentacles that, that come off uh, Jerry's decision after meeting with Mike yesterday. Do you think the Cowboys ever reached down to Belichick? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Jerry and Steven have a very good relationship with Bill. You know, so it would certainly be a lever they could pull if they wanted to. Um, and... I look like he doesn't work for the Patriots anymore. So, you know, it's you know certainly something they could do. And if you remember, like, the, when the last time that Jerry fired a coach, like, I, like Jason was sort of twisting in the wind there for a while. Like, they were borderline running a search while Jason was still employed, you know. So um, it certainly wouldn't, it wouldn't, wouldn't go against, you know, it, it certainly it wouldn't be unprecedented when it comes to the way Jerry operates. And he has this sort of relationship with Belichick where, if he wanted to do it, he could certainly do it. You you see Belichick and the Falcons as a uh, a good matchup. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, I think there's a there's a couple elements here. Like first, there there are some connections um, between Arthur Blank and and Bill, and um, you know, like they 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 had Thomas Dimitrov there uh, for for twelve years, thirteen years, I think, actually, um, and. Like, Scott Pioli was there for a time. So, you know, Arthur Blank has seen the Patriot vernacular, and it's actually worked for him in the past. And that's given him a way of back-channeling to Belichick over the last few weeks. Um, you know, and then I think the other piece of it, like, that, you know, I, I, like I, I just think it's, like, a different type of hire than Blank's ever made before. Like, if you look back at his 25 years as owner, um, you know, he had Jim Moore, rising young assistant, probably Vitrino college coach. Mike Smith, like an experienced assistant, but never seen as a head coach. That worked out pretty well. And then Dan Quinn and Arthur Smith is rising young assistant. So um, this would be totally different, but he's, you know, he's 81 years old. And I think he thinks he's got a team that's right on the precipice. If they can get the quarterback position worked out to compete in the here and now. And so it would make sense if he would act with urgency right now, which I think is part of why he you know fired Arthur Smith as quickly as he did. And, and why they moved to go and bring Belichick in as quick as they did. I, I think a lot of it's going to come down, similar to like Harbaugh with the Chargers, I think a lot of it will come down to the infrastructure there and if Bill thinks that he can set it up the way that he wants to set it up. Yeah, we talk about Jerry Jones and his age. Arthur Blank has been closer to winning a Super Bowl than Jerry Jones has, and there's a sense of urgency. Yeah. They have a young team. They just need to have a little bit more of a culture there. It feels like they've they've... You know, they were 8-9, and 8-9, and 8-9. Eight and nine and eight and nine. Well, you're going to pick 8th in the draft every year, and you're just not going to get that much better. And I understand if you're going to swing, Arthur Blank is swinging for the fences, whether it's Harbaugh or Belichick. But you think Harbaugh, still more likely if he goes, it's uh, the Chargers. There's just so many tea leaves that are pointing that way. Um, you know, Dan, I think, like, if you look at, like, with their, their – their, um, their general manager interviews, I mean, we can break this down. Like, Joe Ortiz works in Baltimore, worked with John Harbaugh. Ian Cunningham in Chicago came up in Baltimore, worked with John Harbaugh. 
Ed Dodds worked with Jim Harbaugh in Oakland 20 years ago. They've got a really strong relationship. Um, and he's been seen as a guy who could be Harbaugh's GM for a while now. And then Brandon Brown, the Giants assistant general manager, hmm. has a relationship with Harbaugh as well. So that's four general manager short general manager interviews that have been connected to Harbaugh. Um, I, I just think, like, if you look at Jim, I, I, I think from an NFL perspective, he's like the modern-day Parcells, right? Like, he is going to come in. He's going to shake your program up. He's going to get – um, he's going to get results really, really quickly, and he's going to run hot. And so, like, that might mean you're not signing up for 10 years. You might be signing up for four or five. But you know what it's going to look like, and you're probably going to get results really quickly. And they've got this sort of roster where you can say that's exactly what they need. You know, like, they've got a roster that's ready to win right now. And the presence of the quarterback obviously isn't lost on anybody. So, I just think for a lot of different reasons it matches up. Now, I think what this is going to come down to, a lot of people have made a lot of the money, right? The Chargers are sensitive to the idea that they're irrelevant in L.A. or that they're cheap, and hiring Harbaugh would address both those things. I don't think it's so much paying Harbaugh. It's like, are you willing to pay to bring in all the people that he wants there, right? Like, so does he want to bring Jesse Minter as his defensive coordinator for Michigan? How much is that going to cost? Uh, Does he want certain things in their new facility set up a certain way? You know, so there are a lot of things that I think are important. And then I think from Jim's perspective, after how things, you know, ended in in, in San Francisco, I think his feel for the Spanos family is going to be really important, too. He's Albert Breer, the Monday morning quarterback, senior NFL reporter. The Eagles situation, Nick Sirianni has not met with his owner. They're, I think, supposed to, or at least it's been reported they'll meet today. Feels like Diana Rossini with her reporting that they're looking for coordinators here, not looking for a new head coach. Is that how you read this? So, like, I would caution anybody to draw any sort of conclusions until after that meeting happens. Because this is sort of how it went with Doug three years ago, where, like, you know, like Jeffrey didn't do his meeting with the coach, like, the day after the season. He waited and, um, and waited almost a week, you know, and like that allowed for, for Doug and for Howie to kind of get their ducks in a row. And here's what it's going to look like. And, you know, when, when Doug went in there, there were disagreements over the staff and that wound up being sort of it, you know? So like my perception of what Diana reported yesterday might be a little different than some other people in that, like, I think some other people said like, Oh, well maybe that's not exactly that's not that. That's not what you'd be doing if you were getting fired, right? Mm-hmm. I look at it more like, okay, are they just getting their ducks in a row now, and put and and working to put something in front of Jeffrey Lurie, and then it's up to Lurie to decide what he wants to do. I think that that's probably more a more realistic way of looking at it. Uh, it's a sensitive subject. I'll try to approach it as delicate as possible. How concerned should the NFL be with Jim Irsay? running the Colts? I mean, you know, like there's that thing, right? Like where you say that, um, that the owners are held to the same standard as players and the NFL tried to trumpet that forever. And then, you know, after, um, you know, after a few different things happened, they took that language out of the, out, out of their bylaws, right. Or out of their constitution. And I mean, I, I think they've, sort of made it clear um, in doing so and conducting themselves the way they've conducted themselves that it's like that old text text tram line. I don't know if you've heard that one, but at one point, like this was like in the seventies or eighties during one of their labor negotiations, uh, text tram was the president of the Cowboys at the time said, you guys don't understand. You're the, you're the cattle and we're the ranchers. Mm-hmm. And I sort of think that's what this is. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, they aren't held to the same standard because I do think, a player, like, and I do want to be sensitive to it, you know, but I think, like, if, a, if this was a player or this was a coach or this was an executive, they would be, like, in a situation like this, they would get treatment, they'd be treated with care, but they'd be removed from the situation, right? Like, so you would immediately move to say, okay, we're going to get people to take over his duties and we're going to, whoever it is, like, whether it's a coach, a player, or somebody in the office, like, you know, we just can't have that person in the in you know out front for our organization anymore and um and we're going to give them their time to get well and i actually think that's sort of the humane way to do it um but you know a lot in a lot of these cases with owners 
They don't want to go through the embarrassment of being removed, and they have the power to say no. And so that's what makes you know how this will be handled going forward a little less predictable. Yeah, if this was the NBA, the NBA is taking control of franchises. That doesn't happen with the yeah. NFL. Yeah, it doesn't, and it's just. I mean, look, it's like sort of the ethos of the sport, right? Like, and it's just. I mean, we've seen. I'm. I don't need to list the number of owners, but there. I, everybody knows there are a few where it's very, very clear they're not held to the same rules that that everybody else in the league is is it possible harbaugh doesn't get an nfl job offer i mean i'd say unlikely um i i I still think the charger again like i think i think it's more in this case and he hasn't gotten i mean it's not like you know at the broncos last year there was like real back and forth but other than that like i like he really hasn't gotten a hard offer um, over the last years, I think it's different this year. You I think, think the will. Chargers' job is his if he wants it, Albert? Yes. Okay. Yes, and I think, I think, but I think like the context of that's going to be important, right? Like, so I think a lot of it is going to come down to, um, you know, how how it looks and how how things are set up, and you know, I think that that that'd be the thing that Jim would be leery of. You know, I mean, look, like there's no secret. You know, he's clashed a little with his athletic director at Michigan, and. He had an issue with the owner in, in, in San Francisco. And the Chargers have not only the owner, but, like, the, the, the two sons, John and A.G., um, run the football side and the business side. And so, you know, is John comfortable or is Jim comfortable with that? Like, I think that's the stuff that they really need to work through. So I don't think it's a question of whether or not he'd get offered the job. I think he will. I think it's the context under which he's offered the job, right? Like, and what are the rules of engagement when he's going in? I think that that's the important stuff. Again, I think they'll pay him. Like, I think they will. I think a lot of it's going to come down to how it's set up and whether or not he's comfortable with that. Always appreciate you taking time out. Safe travels. Thank you, Albert. All right. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. That's Albert Breer, Monday morning quarterback.